Hi, this is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today. I'm in San Francisco at the eMetrics Web Marketing Optimization Summit with John Marshall of Market Motive. And John, we've been having this fascinating discussion about the use of mobile phones and, uh, and, and how to design a website. Uh, I just got one of these uh, Palm Pilot things. I got right. a, a central model. You've got an iPhone. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I'm realizing how restrictive the browser is on mine. Uh, how should small to medium businesses be looking at mobile traffic? First of all, it's possible to look at your Google statistics and not see much mobile traffic at all. Yeah, you got an interesting problem there that uh, we call sample bias, okay. actually. And it's because um, the data that Google Analytics collects about the devices accessing the websites does not include the vast majority of mobile devices. Why? Because of the way they work, the browsers in these uh, mobile devices, in the main, there is an exception, but in the main, these devices which includes Blackberries, the Palm device, uh, regular cell phones, the browsers in all of those devices have no JavaScript capability. Okay. So anything that you're measuring through JavaScript, it, it just doesn't show up. And anything that makes your site run through JavaScript won't work. Correct. <laughs> so you've got this really interesting problem that you you don't think about your website working on mobile devices because you don't see mobile devices coming to your website, but part of the reason that you don't see mobile devices coming to your website is because they don't work very well on your website. There's a very important change in this um, universe that's taken place in the last few months, and the change is um, the iPhone. It's the web browser. The web browser in the iPhone is extremely good, okay. the, the user experience. Uh, your favorite restaurant in Santa Cruz is what? Swaff Wine. Okay, we pulled Excellent up, place. <laughs> we've pulled up the restaurant website on the uh, brow web browser of my Palm Centro. Right. And uh, it renders the images, go down a little bit so you can see, yeah. you can kind of scroll up and down. But, but there's a big difference when we use the browser on your uh, your iPhone. Let's yeah. take a look at that. This this is the same site rendered on an iPhone. Yeah, and and notice um, it's a it's a really quite a different experience. First of all, we see the website uh, full screen. I mean, we we look at the whole website. It's just shrunk down. Um, uh, some people would struggle, I think, to read this text. So the iPhone has this wonderful feature where you can expand the image Ooh, that's and cool. it re-renders and you can scroll around in this just by touching the screen. Now what if you have kind of a wide image? Yeah, so some websites are, are sort of um, portrait oriented and some are landscape. Can you, Let's just shrink this back down. Can you turn the iPhone? Yeah, and now if I just rotate the phone, it flips to a landscape mode and now I've got a, a more wide view and the, uh, I can click on the links just by touching on the screen. There is a huge difference here. So what should we do now with this sea change in the making with the iPhone? I expect, yeah. I expect John, within a, iPhone set a new standard. Yeah, the, 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 the fundamental thing is that the, the, the web browsing experience on the iPhone is so good that people actually use it. Now, on other devices, people tend to not use the web browser very much. Therefore, why build or even take it into account in the design of a website? Nobody cares because nobody yeah. uses it. But, but everybody now is going to have to compete with the iPhone in the quality of their web browser it, to stay in the game. It is, um, it is a, a different world with the iPhone and the web browsing experience works very well. Another very important difference is that the iPhone does execute JavaScript. So that, that data collection that you're using in Google Analytics say, you actually do get data on the number of people reaching your website on an iPhone. Let me tell you, I bought an iPhone specifically because the web browsing experience is so good. And I regularly use my iPhone when I'm out and about to find local businesses. I actually do this. I am in San Luis Obispo and I use Google search on my iPhone and I type in best restaurant in San Luis Obispo. And crucially, I not only do a Google search, because Google works quite well, but the website of local restaurants, a regular restaurant, you know, the website, I actually look at that website on my iPhone and it works. It's a dinky little screen, but it's good quality and it works. Mm -hmm. 
and and those are small businesses. Those are not big mammoth right. corporations. Right. We're not talking here about um, you know I'm doing a search on my iPhone in yellow pages. I'm actually coming to your website and, and, on my iPhone. And the reason you're doing this because it's a mobile device. Businesses that you would go to right. would be the natural place that would really want to optimize for this. Yeah, so how would you optimize this restaurant in San Luis Obispo for an iPhone good, or a mobile device? Good news. It's very simple. Actually, we need to make a distinction. The, the iPhone is in a different category than other mobile devices. Yes, and, it is. and forgive me if that comes across uh, like no, well, I've been well, around Steve Jobs too much. No, it but is I, think, different. I think I agree with you. Yeah. The, the, the reality is that optimizing for um, a mobile device, except the iPhone, is so painful and so complicated <laughs> that people just don't do it. And, and I fully respect that, and I think that's the right choice. We all have too much to get done. You know, you've got limited resources. The iPhone is highly likely to work already on your website. You probably don't need to drastically change anything on the website. But you could do some things to make the experience better for an iPhone user and be a good citizen. And one of them would be um, lighten up on the graphics. Yeah, because your iPhone is running off... A, essentially a telephone modem, yes. not a broadband yeah. thing. So yeah. that means that all the images that we you know, are going to download slowly. We used to say, well, everyone's on broadband now. Right. Well, more and more with the iPhone, they're on dial-up. Yeah, that's right. And so we have to be aware of that. Yeah, exactly right. And so, so personally, when I'm bringing up a website on my iPhone, um, I, I have more patience than I would um, on broadband. On broadband, you know, if your website doesn't render in about five seconds, I've, I've run out of patience. On my iPhone, I, I'm willing to wait 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Gee, but a fast-moving guy <laughs> like you. <laughs> but I, 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 I want to. Um, I also want to you know, remind people of a, a very important um, aspect of optimizing for the iPhone that, that really makes it worthwhile. If you can afford to buy an iPhone, you're in a good demographic. Well, that's true. <laughs> so, that's true. So, so even if you need to modify your website to make it work okay on an iPhone, it's worth doing because those people have got money to spend. Right. I almost said money to burn, but that's probably not true. <laughs> but they certainly have money to spend. So do it. Optimize your site. And it, it's not hard. You probably don't need to do much. Yeah. Well, John, this is fascinating. Thanks so much for sharing with us. Tell me about your business and what you do. Thank you. Yeah, um, Market Motive, we, uh, we teach people online marketing best practices, and we have a faculty of industry experts, all done online, subscription to the content, done through video and uh, Q&A, and there's a certification and testing. Learn how to do it the best way. All right. Thanks so much. This is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today.